Okay, so today we're going to be looking at Stop Motion Studio. So this is a free app. It does have some in-app purchases for some other bits and pieces, but um, you know what? You probably don't even need them because we can app smash this with something like iMovie and it'll do those for you. So let's get started. Um, continue. Essentially, nice, clean, easy interface, which I love. So you can see a little example of kind of what this is going to do. So if I just you know tap on that. Um, actually, I probably should have mentioned this. With a lot of these apps, the first time you're using them, you'll get this a lot of times asking you to access something. So for us using an iPad, it's fine, but for kids, you know, you really need to tell them that it, it needs to say okay on this. So because it's the first time using it, it goes, hey, I need to use your camera, I need to use your microphone, and you need to do okay. If the student does tap in, um, don't allow, you do actually have to go back into the settings and the privacy and then allow it. So it can be a bit of a pain in the butt. So I've always told my students, whenever this comes up, you just generally hit okay. For school, anyway. All right, so let me just get back out of that. See the example here? So I can go back to the start here and I'll play their example. And then I will uh, show you how you do it yourself. Really, really easy. Yay, welcome. But we can do better than that, and we can do math. So let's head back to the start. So essentially, you're greeted with this interface, plus to do a new project. I tap on plus. So you've got your camera. So this is using, hello, the, the camera there. And down the bottom here, you'll see your row of icons. Um, there's your photos that you take. Back and forth, you can choose uh, what kind of camera you want to use. You've got a timer as well, if you want to set a timer. Um, but all you really do is snap a picture. So if I snap that, there it goes, there's my picture, and I can snap my second picture, and off I go, and then I can kind of scrub between those two pictures. So you can actually see in the background there's that change there as well. Uh, and that's all it is, it's just photo after photo after photo. So you can be quite creative, and um, I'm going to show you an example of how to do this maths in a second, um, with how you do this. So for instance, if I get Rafferty's favourite toy, I'm going to try and angle this in here into a new shot, and um, we'll move him back here, it's going to be interesting because it's not key. All right, we can see he's wobbling a little bit, so I might just take a photo. Right, and then I'm going to move him a little bit, and it's making my keyboard go a little bit now. I'll take another shot, and I can move him, move him across. All right, so if I kind of scrub between those two shots there, you'll see that change in shots. Now, the best thing this can do is a thing called onion skinning, which is super, super helpful, um, and that'll make this whole moving between frames a lot easier. Okay, so you can see down here you've got a few options. If I turn on my um, configuration up here, you can see this is the way it plays back. These are your audio options, and oops, again, there's that access, and here's how we do a, uh, a voiceover. Okay, so I'm just going to cancel that. If you look on the left, you'll see this kind of scrubber. All right, so I'm just going to scrub him back and forth. And what that is doing is that's showing you the previous frame, okay, and the current camera. All right, so if I scrub just enough in between there, all right, what you'll be able to see, especially if I come in here, you'll see that previous frame and you'll just see my camera there of what it's seeing now. So how that's handy is if I kind of want to move this across. So let me show you. Let me do a new frame. Uh, I won't use that guy. I'll use another one of our toys. All right. I'm going to just do a new frame. All right. Here we go here. And you can see if I place this guy in here and I bring it all the way up, that's what I'm seeing. So I'm going to put my car here and I'm going to tap that shot. All right, so now I'm going to bring that onion skin down. All right, so now I can see my camera and my previous shot. So I can just move this guy just a little bit. I probably should really have used better props. Take another photo. Move him a little bit more. And you can see, you can kind of see there, that because you can see the previous frame, it's really easy to get that finite movement as you go. Okay, now again, I'm, I'm, oops, I should have moved my hand away. So I'm rushing through this quite quickly. Um, so you can you don't have to be stuck seeing me do this thing the whole time. But you can see what I'm doing here. Now, if you want to be really creative, you know, you can have your little Lego man and you can, you can pose all of his different arms and legs. You can start using sticky tape and you can stick stuff everywhere. Like, you're really only limited by your, uh, your imagination with these. And again, I left my hand in there, so... Um, really good app also for students to work in teams. I find it's a really great teamwork app because, you know, you have one student, which is the, the camera person, uh, and then the other student, which might be doing the posing. You could have another student, which is doing the direction, another student, which is getting everything ready. You know, so a really, really good app to get kids to work uh, as teams. So I'll kind of hurry this along, and then we'll make him brush. All right, and now if I scrub between there, you can see my guy move. So I'll bring my onions getting down here back to the video. And if I go all the way back to the start and I hit play on this uh, little uh, creation of ours, all right, whoops. And we'll just, oops, 
play that. There you go. You can see our truck kind of moving across. Easy. Um, and that's basically it. So you can see when I tapped on one of those frames, you do have a lot of options here. You can select a frame, you can copy a frame. So you might want to have a, I don't know, a, an explosion. And so that frame's there for a few seconds. So instead of keep on uh, taking photos, you can just kind of select that one frame and then you can kind of copy it or move it across or you can um, hold it for a bit longer. And how many times would have that frame? So say 20, 15 times. So now it'll hold that same frame in there for a longer uh, selection of time. Um, delete, move, all that kind of stuff. We can move them around as well, so you can change where the frames go. Uh, again, we, we talked about our camera controls at the top there, and our themes. Now, this is where you have that in-app purchasing stuff, but like I said, what I found with a lot of this is I will make my video in um, in here, and then I will take that video and I'll open it in something like iMovie, which I've already got, which I can do a lot more other things as well. So it will export it as a video for you. Um, one thing though that is ready to go is your voiceover. So the kids can make a video and they can do a voiceover for it. So really good when they want to explain something like maps or, or, or something like that, they can use that voiceover video. And then you export this and you're ready to go. So I'll just quickly cancel that. And of course the other options down here, a timer. So you can put your timer on. So if I turn that on, I can set a time for whenever the photo uh, wants to take. So again, if students want to be in their video, they can set a timer angle the camera and get it ready to go and they can do it so it takes a photo every five seconds so again a lot of that teamwork they've got to get in when we can take the photo get out so a lot of cool stuff um that's about it and yeah so huge amount of freedom with this and i'm sure you can think of a million things that you can use it for 